Welcome everyone back to ShiftCast episode 10 today that we're going to be recapping the major, talking any and everything Rocket League esports. Yen's got some friends behind him, a growing group. Can there's, you, uh, there's five right idea? now. Five. Uh, but if you watch the podcast on YouTube and you go back to previous episodes, there's one more every episode. Mm. I'm going to have to start buying more ducks soon. You're going to be a full wall by season three. Listen, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We got to support Yen's funding the growing duck community back there. Um, let's talk about the major, though. How did you guys feel about it? Throughout the weekend, we had, obviously, um, I mean, General Mates just popped up out of nowhere. Juicy, specifically, was phenomenal. Um, I guess they all were, but, yeah, well, general thoughts about the major. Yeah, the, I think, I know we're going to hear, you know, Jens was lucky enough to be on site grinding, grinding press the yeah. whole major. So we're going to learn a lot about his experiences later on in the show. But, uh, you know, from a viewer standpoint, I think it was the best open air land yet. Um, you know, I think for all the, uh, the the criticism of the format, you know, it, the eSport, it's just, it's just going to be, like, RLCS is always going to be RLCS. It's always going to be exciting. It's always going to have great rivalries and incredible moments. And I think... Um, I think that this major just proved that you can't, you can't kill it. You can't do anything. It's always going to be great. It truly really delivered on the matchups, you know, the games, even the crowds. It might have been a little bit smaller than we're used to from other majors recently, um, but they were hype. They were down for it. They, I mean, some of the organizations, right, brought their their own fan base. And even though Carmine Corp couldn't come with their entire entourage, they still showed up. So yeah, it was really lovely to see everything that was going on at the major. Absolutely. And I know that Falcons and Fury were bounced at top eight, but man, they looked, I mean, they looked at the same level there as everyone else in the top eight. It really did. You know, we talked about this. Yeah. We talked about this before, um, how we were hoping that we would get that kind of competition. But I think after seeing those those eight teams compete, I truly do think that any of those eight could have won on their day. Yes. Like if any of those eight were popping, they could have won on uh, on the weekend. Yeah, that's yeah, the same no, sentiment you heard from the players themselves. Mm -hmm. right? They're all talking about how if they play like they can in scrims, they can beat basically anyone. Yeah. It's getting and of impressive. Of course, that's the difficult part, right? Playing that's up right. to your your the best of your ability and that's right i mean a lot of teams tried very and, hard and we saw we saw the you know i would say each of them we saw them do it at different times they just couldn't mm -hmm. put it together the whole time like general mates did and we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit um or i guess we could jump right into it general mates prove everyone wrong they go undefeated and win copenhagen um i mean was that the most impressive run just straight through the tournament i mean the teams that they were beating were all phenomenal. You know, they, I mean, they, they like, didn't really, they didn't really get like, they didn't really get any, you know, kind of favorable matchup. I would guess I yeah. would say after rule one in the, uh, who didn't prove to be as, as formidable as some people, including all of us thought, um, I think, you know, there are some runs, I think in earlier, like online, uh, sorry, league play, era that are very very impressive just because it was again such a small major or yeah. su such small events that like everybody was the cream of the crop there but you look at who they beat man bds two seed at the eu look like they were right there with carmen corp then they mm -hmm. sweep the falcons which is unbelievable based on the form the falcons were on and the wins that they got in the tournament then they go into the quarterfinals it beat my boys it hurt but like that team, they Gen G had them on the ropes going into that game six and they figured it out. That's mm -hmm. the second best team in NA and a team that had, had the number one team in NA's number for a while. Then they go into the semifinal, they beat the consensus best team in the world. A team that looked unstoppable. Like they had that plot armor that Ryze and Vatira always seemed to have and they broke the plot armor. And then in the final, they went up against, you know, the, the super team of North America and they took care of business. And, you know, so to, you know, some people we have these ideas of like Mickey runs this is just the complete opposite of whatever that was. Yeah. If you make a list of the top six teams in the world, I think they beat like four or five of them. And, you know, to me, that 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 is such a tough thing to do because you can't even be off for one series to do something like that because yeah. of the quality of teams that you're playing. We, we should have seen it coming with uh, the sweep against the Falcons in yeah. the Swiss stage because right. these Falcons, the first match you could say against OG winning 3-1, 
I mean, that's maybe an easier matchup. But then the Falcons beat Carmine Corp, got swept by Gentle Mace, and then beat Team Vitality. There's just this weird discrepancy right in the middle hmm. of this Gentle Mates team that yeah. just comes out of nowhere and doesn't give them a single game. And and with, like you said, the form that Team Falcons were on, that is incredibly impressive. Yeah. What One of the things that I didn't understand almost was that the sentiment during between the semifinal and the final, the final semifinal and the final, that was like, well, Carmen Corp's out, G2 is going to win. And I'm like... Gentle Mage just beat Carmine Corp. They beat Falcon to almost beat Carmine Corp. They beat BDS. Like, how are they not the clear favorites in this series? Like, they are on a tear right now. But, um, you know, all, listen, Eversax uh, and Atachi, I think, you know, they've committed to a sort of play style for the last three years uh, as coach-player combo. And, you know, obviously winning the Winter Major last year, it, it was proven right, but that was seen as the Vatira Major, right? And I think that was what was so awesome was to see them reload and, you know, get a couple other great players, get a player unproven, same way they did with Exotic um, last year, and, and implement that strategy into the major, win the, the major, and, you know, write, the, write that roster's name into history when they were seen as potentially not a top eight team going into the major. And also, they all came from different directions, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, you'll see a new team form with two players uh, already sticking together from a previous teams. But uh, all three just came from different teams. They came together under a new organization, first season, first LAN, that they even are in the eSports, and they managed to win it. I mean, that must be, that must feel good for Kotaga and, and mm -hmm. the entire Gentle Mates organization and LP in the sponsor and, and everyone involved. That must be amazing. So, Hootie, I got a question for you. Yeah. What do you think was the difference? Because obviously they, they came out really strong yeah. in the um, in the first regional, made the uh, final, fell to Carmen Corp, but they looked like they were right there. They looked like the team we saw at the major. Mm -hmm. And then there was, a, there was a couple hiccups. And then they showed up and they looked absolutely flawless. Based on what you were watching, I know there were long days, but did you feel like you noticed anything that maybe like we're like, okay, the gentle mates online weren't doing this. Now they're doing this. Was it confidence? Was it strategy? What, what, uh... what would your take be? Yeah, I don't know if there was like a specific turning point for them. I, I know that you heard Itachi and Eversax throughout their wins and interviews in the um, in the event. They they just said that they were finding out things that they were struggling with, or you know, um, identifying issues that were causing them problems, and and they worked very hard to overcome that. And so, you know, from from an outsider's perspective, I think what I saw is um, tight play. They were very close to one another, which I feel like is just like, if Itachi's on a team, I feel like that happens. And I think that mm -hmm. is more so to do with him having such an incredible understanding of the game and the flow of the game and where, you know, the kind of the pressure points are, if you will. Like, mm -hmm. where is a threat defensively? Where do I need to position myself? Where is the flow of this play going? And how can I put my opponents into an awkward position um, and, and just be a threat just by existing in this space? And you see, you know, Bates talked about it a couple of times, tap in merchant, all that stuff. But that is, it's, you gotta be it's, there very, to tap it in. it's monkey moon esque in the sense mm -hmm. that it's just pure intelligence, you know, reading mm -hmm. the game. It reminds me of turbo as well. Just always finding themselves in the right place at the right time. And I think that's a big part of it. And then another thing that I noticed, um, and, and again, I'm not, I don't know, I don't even know that this went poorly for them throughout the split, but I, I feel like it was very, um, you know, they excelled in this area at the major It's just their challenge game. It was never about trying to win a challenge in the sense that, like, I want the ball progressed down the field, mm -hmm. right? And, and and I know that that's not necessarily win, but a lot of the community will say, like, win, and, and they think, like, forwards, right? Win a kickoff mm -hmm. forwards. But they'll, 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 you know, take that challenge and drop it right to a teammate exactly on his nose. You see Itachi in the most awkward of spots, or so it looks, he'll have, he'll have, like, 12 boosts in his tank, and he'll get two, three, four 50-50s, back to back to back to back. And that's just, you know, draining the um, the boost of their opponents, buying his team time to get into a, a better position. It just felt like they were one step ahead mentally. And then on top of that, I think Juicy really came into his own. And when he started popping, you could almost just see and feel that confidence level up because he mm -hmm. was, I mean, there was no hesitation. That sucker was up 
immediately. I mean, he was flying all over the pitch. Um, and so, like I said, I, I don't know if I can pinpoint one specific thing that that they adjusted, but I thought their challenge game was incredible. I thought their positioning and the way that they played off one another and how tight um, their rotations were and, the, and their follows of, of one another's challenges. Um, and then I see here we, we, we've got Eversex mentioned as a coach. One thing that I want to say specifically is um, just a sign of trust in one another, confidence in one another. They didn't take that timeout. Mm -hmm. And we hear so much discourse about timeouts when coaches don't use it when they are down two games. You go down 2-0, if a coach doesn't use it, oh, here we go. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> if you're up 2-0 and then a team um, bounces back and they win two, here we go again. Wow, 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 wow. The coach is always going to know what that team needs. Yeah. And sometimes they're going to make the right choice and they're still going to lose. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. how this competition goes. But I think, you know, Eversax feeling confident that they were going to walk into that game six. They knew what they needed to do. They felt comfortable. He had trust in the players. The players had trust in one another and they got it taken care of. And I think, I mean, it just felt like one of those times where it was just destiny that they were all clicking and it was just, man, such an impressive performance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course you need the player quality to pull it off, but exactly like you said, Hoodie is the same thing that Eversex expressed uh, when I asked him about working with Itachi for a while mm -hmm. and the structure they're trying to build as a team. And his response was, we're trying to build a really offensive team. Yeah. And it didn't seem to work during the split, but they try to punish the mistakes other players make. And they always try to find themselves on offense. They try to stay yeah. on offense. And he really prefers that kind of play style. You can read the interview on Shift Early, GG, but there's also a YouTube video right on the YouTube channel if you're watching this. Nice. Um, I was going to say, I think it's cool that the final came with two coach player combos who had been with each other for so long yeah. in Atomic, yeah. Yeah. Sathew, and Eversax And I think Absolutely. it shows how important having a relationship between coach and player is where the where the player sets an example of how to be coachable i think there are far too many times where just be, due to the youth of the scene that coaches are uh, over or are not heard enough in in um you know in team practices and in games but yeah. you know when the, one of the best players on your team and one of the best players in the world is listening to the coach you have to listen to the coach because if not you know, what, what, why are you better than Itachi? Why are you better than Atomic? And I think the strategy and the way that both of those teams were able to implement their play style is a lot in due to the fact that both those players have set the example for their teammates. Like, hey, if you're going to come in here and you're going to play with us, you're going to listen to the coach and you're going right. to do what we're want to do. Yep. That's, I think, a very underrated thing. I think you saw it as well with Carmen Corp the split. I know they didn't make the final, but they were all very coachable. And I know they Absolutely. haven't been together for as long. And I think that's something we're going to see where it's not just that you're bringing a coach sorry, bring, bringing a franchise player, you're bringing their their coach with them. I think one of the ones that you, you did see last year was Sad Jr. and LJ, where once Sad Jr. came back over to coach, it was like, okay, now LJ setting the culture of like, hey, this guy helped me become who I am on Oxygen uh, when they were still on Oxygen, was still in North America. Now we're going to all listen. And then all of a sudden, SSU does better. So it was really cool to see the coaching really, really come to a head with so much discourse around it in the last year or so. Absolutely. Got to give credit to to those guys like Eversex, uh just building that culture. I know we hear a lot about it with, with like luminosity and. Rattles, think, rattles uh, the same way with raw grade. I yeah, think. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. But, but, and, and you, you notice too, like. These are the environments that are finding success. Like these are the mm -hmm. teams that you end up see. And, and it's not always like when I say success, it doesn't always mean win the tournament, but LG mm -hmm. they're on their way up. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you talked they about back. That's right. G2. Um, uh, space station. I think, um, I think, OG, uh, well, Alu. I think, OG yeah, Alu as example. well. Yeah, Alu. Yeah. Right. So, like, um, stay, staying with that. And, like, you know, for to add a player like First Kill, who's had some clashes with coaches, and then, you know, mm -hmm. having Jack major winners be like, hey, we're listening. We're going to play this way. Right. That, that means something, right? And it helps yeah. everybody grow. Yeah, absolutely. Well, before we move forward, just a huge congratulations to Gentlemates. Like you said, I mean, three to four months existing in, in Rocket League Esports, accomplishing something that loads of orgs have, have never and will never do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, a huge congratulations to them. We got uh, two-time land winner uh, Seiko. Seiko, Itachi. Itachi, two-time land winner. So, um, and then obviously Juicy grabbing his first land W as well. Absolutely yeah. deserved for those, those, um, those players. All right, let's jump over to G2.
Um, what do we think about that G2 performance? They go grand finals. Does this prove that NA is finally back? How do you two, how do you two interpret this performance? I want That's Jens to go question. first. I want what Jens to go first. But, it is. But, I mean, um, Rettles is on, right. fence it. Sit on that fence. Rettles is completely right uh, when he said that you can't just put all European teams over yeah. G2, you know, yeah. who are going up to the major. There's there's four teams from, from each region, but G2 is right up there. And they've shown they've shown what they needed to show. I mean, I think for everyone to know that NA isn't a dead region and that they can absolutely compete uh, at that highest level. I mean, making the grand final, it doesn't really even matter how you get there at that point. Um, mm-hmm. and, and they did beat really good teams getting there. So, yeah, they're just... They're back, I guess. I'm ha- I'm happy for for North America. Uh, I'm happy for the international Rocket League esports scene. Um, but more so than just G2 proving that their their region is worthy, it it's a story of this isn't just an EU affair, right? It's a, mm-hmm. a very international thing now. It isn't yeah. just EU. It isn't just EU and NA, mm-hmm. yep. because Falcons and Furia, they were right there with them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, I was gonna say Go when when uh, when the and the the matchups got announced, like the top eight was finalized. I was feeling really bad for Rettles, man, because he he came, they came out day one and just got spanked by Furia. And then here comes the Furia USA account just posting like an old tweet of his being like <laughs> Sam sucks. And and then I'm like, oh my god, if G2 and Jedji lose, he's gonna get two two of his tweets like just plastered across and just gonna be known as that guy after such a storied career. But um, you know, I think G2, I'm gonna be honest, I think G2 were was on the weaker side of the bracket, but it's not like it was weak teams they were playing. Does that make sense? They did have a tough Swiss, but I don't think it was because they were playing badly, uh, except for the one part of the game that matters the most, which is actually putting the ball in the goal uh, into the net <laughs> i think if they had done that earlier mm-hmm. they would have had a much better swiss run i think they would have beaten yeah. Gen G and they would have beaten bds they would have had to play bds i don't think or they would have had to play bds maybe but who knows they would have beat those two teams yeah um but they figured it out uh, i thought beast mode was uh, absolutely lights out the entire tournament um you know when they weren't playing well he was still sticking out and then when they were playing well he's playing well and i think it shows the top of na still can't compete with the rest of the world and i think we got used to this sort of open era, early open era idea of like, there's always going to be three or four NA teams sticking around, but for the majority of Rocket League's history, it's been like one or two or the big three. I don't know if you remember the big yeah. three back in league play. And I think that we're back into that. We're all the best players who consolidated their talent in North America. And, uh, you know, Daniel, I think had a great, great Saturday, great Sunday. Um, Beast Mode, like I said, I think he was a top five player at the event. So um yeah i'm happy to see them back i know i, I was a little low on them after their, uh open qualifier three performance even though i predicted them to win the event <laughs> but um you know i i i'm i like seeing international competition i would have been happy if it was falcons and, and eu in the final i would have been happy if it was furia and eu in the final um and uh i, I just thought g2 played really well and, and they were able to you know do one of the most poetic things in in rocket league history which is after all the, the debates in RLCS X about NRG and BDS, G2 deployed the prime NRG sit in net and counterattack style and beat Monkey Moon. It was absolutely beautiful. All those debates on Johnny Boy stream and Pre stream, they all came to a head and Beast Mode took the took the mantle look Captain America and sat in that net and shot that ball across the field. It was beautiful stuff, man. It was beautiful stuff. It was. I think the thing that I was like most encouraged by with this G2 team was they like, it didn't come easy. You know, Hmm. they had to face adversity. They did not have a clean Swiss performance. Um, I think they, like you said, they, they, they struggled to actually score. They had plenty of pressure. I mean, it felt like moments, uh, excuse me, it felt like games where there would be minutes of them having possession and just continuing to pepper the net and they just couldn't get shots in. Um, But that specifically that BDS series where you know, we're we're in game two and we're looking at this and it's just all of game one was BDS. 
all a game two was BDS, and you're thinking, oh, here we go again. They're going to mm-hmm. get smacked. And they bounce back. And I think that is, you know, I think that's a big moment for them uh, mentally. I think that mm-hmm. will inspire confidence moving forward. You know, one of the things that we hear talked about a lot is experience. And I, I feel like that's just kind of like a catch-all word. But what that means is get finding yourself in these different moments and then learning how to deal with it. And sometimes it's through failure, right? Sometimes yeah. you fail and you realize, okay, I, I overreacted or I didn't make an adjustment or, you know, I didn't keep my head on straight, whatever. Um, but I think that was, uh, that was a big learning moment for them and, and will inspire confidence moving forward. <clears throat> and the reality is obviously those three players have been around for a while, but this is a brand new team for them. These are, you know, it's a, it's a fresh squad. They've had a great first split two um, two wins a second place finish, and then they go second at the major. That is nothing to, you know, have your head down about. And so I think, you know, as long as they continue to stay hungry um, and, and continue to work hard and, and build on what they've already got here, I think that G2 team will be, you know, a top four, top eight team internationally throughout the whole season um, and potentially, you know, get themselves a win in a major or a world championship. Sure. Let's bounce over to Carmi Corp, though everyone's favorite i would be willing to guess probably 65 to 80 percent of the prediction brackets probably featured casey in the finals if not winning and they fall out in the semifinal what do we make of that can't win them all that's all i see uh they played phenomenal all weekend um and you know i think it's a little scary uh for the rest of the world where you know, Vatira, who is the best player, the cornerstone of that team, has his worst event maybe of his professional career since, you know, he became a serious international compete, competitor and they finished top four and go out in game seven against the champions. Um, you know, just an immaculately coached team, a team that is so willing to, you know, they're so confident, they're so aggressive. I think they ran into a bad matchup. I think that uh, gentle mates, you know, playing as well as they did, were built to counter a super aggressive style where like you said they were punishing every mistake and carmen corp feeds off being so fast and so aggressive that you can't even react to the mistakes they make right um so listen they won three straight events in the toughest region and they lost in seven to the champs uh in 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 the semifinal. Uh, i think they have nothing to worry about they have a few things they have to work on but everyone has to work on something even the gentlemen right. have to work on some stuff too right um so I think that they'll be. Uh, I think they'll be back. I think they'll be the best team in Europe uh, in the next split. Gentlemates got that right now, but I think that'll change over the overline online portion. And uh, I still think this team is destined to hoist some sort of trophy. Yeah, I mean, you also have to look at the way they lost in that semifinals because it's not just a, a matter of they didn't make the finals. You, you have to look at that game and and see that they went two games down and. Yeah. I saw the messages from from the Carmen Core fans. It's over. I'm I'm crying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they were they were so done already. Um, but they bounced back. They, oh, they yeah. were the first ones to get to match point and make it a mm-hmm. three two series for for uh, KC. And then they lost the last or the the sixth game in overtime to go to that game game seven and. Even there, they only lost by one goal. So it was just a super close series. You can't just say gentlemates were way ahead of them. Yeah. It was just very close. And I think that's also why people had that sentiment, Michael, that you, you called <clears throat> on earlier of um, G2 is obviously going to win now because they're not against Garmin Gorb in the finals. It, it felt like throughout the event and throughout the split that Garmin Gorb was the team uh, in particular that was really good at performing under pressure and stepping up when they needed to step up. They couldn't do it against gentlemates, but even uh, if they would have done it there, they would have probably had an even better game against, a better matchup against a team like G2. I mean, gentlemates also made it happen, but it felt like before the grand finals that Carmen Corp had a better chance against them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I definitely understand that. It's also something where, like, <clears throat> like I said, I mean, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if 80% of the brackets featured Carmen Corbett. So right. the whole community had just kind of accepted this notion. And because once that, that team's reason, gone, they just had the ice. Yeah. They have rice and, yeah, the ice melted. <laughs> but, uh, 
can only, you know, you can only do that. Man. So it was too hot. It was too sweaty. The, the whole yeah. series was just too sweaty. But yeah, it, it, they almost made it the, anyway. The I um, mean, when go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Hoodie. Oh, the thing that I was gonna say is, uh, if you rewind to last week's episode, um, I, I mean, I'm not gonna say I called it because I didn't call it. I, I also thought Carmine Court would be there, but this is what I was saying is like. We're at that point now where, like, if BDS is hot, they can beat Carmine Corp. If General Mates is hot, they can beat if Furia, Falcons, who, like, you name it in those top eight. Carmine Corp is not unbeatable. Yeah. Are they incredible? Are they insanely consistent? Are they clutch and icy? Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that they are absolutely untouchable. Even if it goes to a game seven fight like that, they are not unbeatable. And I mean, it, you know, from their perspective, it sucks that it happened then and maybe not like an online regional final, right? But yeah. That's just where we're at. Carmen Corp is incredible. They are consistent, but there are so many people nipping at those heels that, you know, to be perfect is, it's so incredibly difficult. And, and like I said, I think we were spoiled with Vitality and everyone just accepted it as like, yeah. oh, well, it must not be too hard. No, <laughs> what they did is freaking insane. It is crazy. And, it, you know, and then Carmen Corp to follow it up and, and, and do, you know, almost the same thing and win three of them. It's just uh, that is that takes an unbelievable level of consistency week in and week out. Um, and, and it definitely does deserve praise, but it doesn't mean that they're unbeatable. That's just where we're at in Rocket League right now. There's too many incredible, you. incredible teams. I mean, you, when, when they I felt like I kept I kept saying this where like they would go down, like they would get on match point. Like another team would get on match point against them. And I'd doesn't be matter. like, okay, well, they here, here we go. Here's time for the script to kick in. And it kept happening. I feel like it happened what like a couple times. It happened once in the Swiss, I want to say, mm -hmm. um, and then it happened against Falcons. And I was like, even when they, Falcons one hundred three two, I'm like, these are just the main characters. And so they watching, are, dude. <laughs> watching, uh, watching that ball hit the ground, it almost felt like I was like, dude, in a well, dream. even that zero second, <laughs> that zero second yeah. lasted forever, and I was like, yeah. are they really gonna do? I this? was like, here we go. Like <laughs> these guys, they just do it. This is what they do. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it's a can't win them all moment. It's definitely not anything to to fret about or. And I I know that they will be dissatisfied. I know, and and that's part of what makes them so great is is you know top four is not enough. It will yeah. not be enough for them, and and I'm sure that they will come back hungry. But I totally agree as well. How close the competition was, yes. right? Yeah. All the mm -hmm. teams could beat each other. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually really funny because the uh, Counter Strike major that was going on at the same time in the same city had the same thing going on where usually there's like one or two teams who are S tier and the rest is A tier and yeah. just like in in Rocket League you had only A tier teams where everyone could beat each other and the big favorites to to win went out in the quarterfinals mm -hmm. so it, it's it's funny how these these majors collided it's just like how Gen G went out in the quarterfinals, you know, heavy favorites. Uh, heavy just, favorites. Okay. <laughs> just can't win them all. Okay. <laughs> that is too funny. Well, um, let's throw this question to you here. The world looks more competitive than ever with Fury beating, defeating Vitality, Falcons beating K Corp, and Vitality uh, and G2 making it to the grand finals. Was this um, the highest quality land ever? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's a question. Mm. I think you look at like some of the, 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 lands we had last year yeah i would say winter i mean all of them i think this was a higher quality land than any land we had last year um i think la and boston were quite quite awesome that first year of open air lands and then there's some in the league player but i mean i i've always been like really pushing back against the idea that like oh there's so many teams that can win like that was like a big um it was a big narrative going into the world championship in 21 22 uh where it's like oh you got space station v1 like furia Fal and i'm like it's g2 moist bds there's three teams that can win it, right and i've always thought that, that was like kind of a cope thing by fans or like sure, people sure. tell them oh yeah your team can win this was the first time i was like oh my god you know like <laughs> yeah like literally outside of bds uh which obviously they came in as, as as really really strong they just didn't look good to me all all tournament i wasn't surprised when when g2 beat them um but all seven of those teams uh, in that in that bracket, going into the final day, or sorry, into the quarterfinal day, I was like, any of these teams can just string together some wins, win a bunch of four three series, and win the major, and that's literally what happened. Like it was like general mates, but four three four yeah. three four two. They did not dominate anybody. They were down three two twice in the bracket. So I mean, 
Uh, it was just a spectacle to watch. So many incredible individual performances, so many clutch performances. Uh, yeah, I can't, I, I can't ask for anything else. If every, if every major can be like this, but just like a different winner, I will be watching until I'm 98 yeah. years old. Because this is the first land that Blast is, is hosting, right? Yeah. And they were like, is this always like this? Because that's that's pretty, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's not just time. the names, that the teams that were in that playoff brackets and the matchups that were very promising, like the last quarterfinals on Saturday with Karin Corp taking on Team Falcons for the revenge from the Swiss stage. And they did to Falcons what the gentlemates did to them in the, in the mm-hmm. semifinals. You know, going back to that game seven after an overtime winner in game six to stay alive. I mean, it, it, you see, everything delivered. It was it was promising and it delivered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has the rest of the world caught up to Europe? I don't think they've caught up, but I think they're as close as they've been in a very long time. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I think that this was the first major that I genuinely thought a non- EU team could win since the fall. Like, or actually, I was pretty, I was pretty in on on phase in the winter, but that was just because I'm like an FK FK head. But like, Carmen Car were the best team in that yeah. in that split for sure. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it just felt like this was the first time I felt like the Falcons and Furia sort of angle of it wasn't like, oh, like they're so cool and fun. It's like, <laughs> no, like they are going to whoop you. Like they, like, it wasn't just like, oh, they're the wild card. Like, no, they're, they're contenders. And yeah. then I think G2 and Gen G both showed up and, uh, you know, G2 didn't have a great Swiss, but Gen G pushed Fury to five. And, you know, Gen, they, they went to four with Car- Carmen Corp, but it was a close four, it was two overtimes. Yeah. And that, that just wasn't something that was happening with the NA teams in, uh, in Düsseldorf, um, they were getting four one, four two, three one. Like they couldn't compete. So I think, yeah, like I don't think the European players are going to be disregarding the other regions anymore. Um, and I think there's now a very clear upper echelon of the esport, which is still mostly European, half European. But though any of those, all four of those teams could have, you know, lost on that quarterfinal day. Yeah, I, I want to. As a disclaimer, say that this is not something I want to say about the death of the entire regions. Sure, but just sure. At just the top, top. Yeah. Just at the top, you can see that Europe brought four teams that can win the major, right? And the fourth seed actually won the major. Yeah. And that, that's a crazy story to think about from the other regions' perspective, where in North America, you realistically had two teams who had a really good chance at mm-hmm. winning it, and you had one team. I guess complexity kind of fell short. I guess uh, kind of the same story for rule one. So you had one team from South America, one team from the Middle East who were in that kind of conversation for really making it to the grand finals and maybe even winning, you know? There's something to say for those teams. So you could say that they haven't caught up because there's four teams from Europe who could do the same thing. But... On, at the very top, the level is there, and that's there, really yeah. important to see as well. Mm-hmm. It sets that it sets a tempo for the rest of the region. Like that's the level you got to get at, and that's how you get more yeah. teams yeah. to that level. Yeah. But so now, let let let's put our money where our mouths are. Hootie, give me your top five teams in the world post major in order. No, okay, in order, in no ordering. In I mean, order, they, in order. It, it's hotly contested now. There's people saying the major winners aren't the best team in the world. Yeah. So, so let me so let me hear your top five. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna be one of those people. I think I'm gonna go Carmi Corp at one. And I know, I know, I know. Gentlemates just won. I know they went to seven though. Played them well. They did. They did. I'll put Gentlemates two. I you know I think it's and, and I'm if somebody has Gentlemates one, I'm I'm not gonna you know I wouldn't debate it. I think that is very fair. You know one A one B if you want. Um. But I I think Carmi Corp's resume you know what they've shown throughout their consistency level i i still have them at at that number one spot so i'll say one kc two mates i'm gonna go three g2 nice four falcons five vitality i like that that's 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 a good five i'll say 
like what it really is is like one a one b and then like three a three b i'm 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 torn like i yeah it doesn't make sense right like i it should be gentle mates one they won it should be g2 above falcons they made it further but but falcons were freaking phenomenal they were Mm -hmm. so incredibly good and y'all know in the last one i was so excited about that team and i just felt like they've been competitive they've been a solid roster obviously had the the different um iterations of the falcons rosters has has dominated that region but this iteration is different they're a cut above right and they showed it man they were so so impressive so yeah i think those are my top five and vitality frankly they're fifth and i still don't think they're performing anywhere near the level they could yeah i think they could be way better than what they've shown yeah because they're you, you got redosen was just like lights on lights off you know mm-hmm. like there's some like when they're playing luminosity and that ball bounces in the box and there's no one there and he just jumps up and just doesn't make contact and magic bears like well I guess I'll tap sure. this in. There's no one. Here. Uh, you like that is not the same Redosin that we saw on Saturday, Sunday. That's not the same one. Yeah. And so, and I, and I think Alpha was a bit quiet throughout the event um, at times. And Zen, I think, was a little bit quiet through Swiss. So I think that team still has, you know, that they still have that level from last year. They're just not, they're not there. They're not performing at that level right now. So, yeah, yeah those, those we, are my top five. It. And I think any of them could, you know, destroy any of the others if they're, if yeah. they're popping on their day. We we I feel like we saw like a little vintage vitality against Furia. Like they just yeah, look yeah. so in sync, Dude, so it fast. really does seem. And this is probably oversimplifying it, but it seems like if Fredosin is on his A game, they're like so yeah. unbeatable. He did well, have he, the family in the crowd buff that helped yeah, him a little bit. That's awesome. Um, Felt more comfortable going into it. But Fairy yeah, he, Peak also said that at the start of that day. He wasn't feeling comfortable at all. He wasn't feeling confident. Yeah. Um, it took him the entire morning and a little bit into the afternoon to actually warm up and, and get ready and get comfortable to play yeah. on stage. So yeah, it, it's it's always a factor, like how you play in a moment, because those players obviously have the, the talent for it, but it doesn't always come out. Yeah. Um, I feel like with, you know, Redosin kind of reminds me of Atomic and the way they play, where they play such a high risk game that it can look really bad when it's not mm-hmm. working. But when it is working, they are so unpredictable and so yeah. bold that it feels like they like they just win every challenge. They're making every play. They're like two steps ahead of everybody. And so let's hope that, you know, he can get back to that form because I'd love to see Vitality get back and really challenge for, for And he also played the last man, uh, yeah. last, uh, you know, bastion of defense for the team quite a bit. And then when something doesn't go right, or the and shot is just to too strong, then right. it just looks like he, you know, failed to to stop it. But yeah. there, there's two players in front of him as well. Um, here's my top five. All right, number one, I'm putting Gentlemates. Okay, I don't expect it to be the number one for long. I'm going to be completely honest with you. But I think you know, similar to like MMA or like boxing, you know, it felt like they went up against the number five challenger, number four challenger, number three challenger, and they just went blow for blow and they beat every single one of them. I think they've earned that spot as the number one team because of the strength of schedule that they they faced on their way to the major. Number two is still KC. Um, number three, I'm actually going to put Falcons at number three. I think they looked the third best out of yeah. everybody. I think that if they had been on the other side of the bracket, they would have made the final. Mm-hmm. Number four, I got G2. So same top four as Hoodie, just swapped one and two and three and four. And the number five, not to be a homer, but give me Gen G number five. He's <laughs> going Gen G. Because listen, <laughs> Vitality, they look great one series, didn't have a yeah. great Swiss, Inconsistent. lost, and, got, and, and, and they kind of blew it against G2. Gen G, I know they didn't make the top four, but they had, with, the, with a, with a, Let's say less than ideal performance from Chronic. It's nerves, no blame. It happens. And, you know, Jack was dealing with some like stuff with his controller. They still got top eight and they were still one game, one yeah. goal really away from taking down the champs early in mm-hmm. that. And who knows if they beat that, the, the, maybe they'd be Chronic or maybe they wouldn't have Or maybe I buy a jersey and wear it for the rest of the season. But mm-hmm. thankfully my wallet got saved. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got Genji number five. I think uh, specifically in their series against Complexity. And then their series against Gentlemates, uh, when they were kind of switched on, they showed a level of speed and aggression I haven't yeah. seen from a team in a while. They, you know, for a team as uh, aggressive as Gentlemates, they were on their back foot for 15 minutes. And Gen G was just bump, demo, pass up field, infield pass, boom, boom, boom. That's the Gen G I thought I was going to see at the beginning of the, the 
at the beginning of the season. And I, if we keep seeing that, Genji, I'm about to get annoying. That's the Genji we're getting every, I'm about every to get show. annoying. <laughs> it's about to get so annoying. But yeah. That's uh, funny. I like it. I think that's a fair top Yen's, five. What, Yen's, you? what you got for us? Oof. I mean, I can't take it away from Gentlemates. They won fair and square. Yeah. They're the best right now. Like Michael said, at the start of the second split, that might not even be the case anymore. <laughs> but they're just so close. Every team I'm going to yeah. mention is just so close to the next one that putting one above the other basically doesn't mean anything. But I'm going to try anyway. Um, <laughs> in second, I have Carmine. Um, because they were so close as well, and they have shown that yeah. they can consistently perform under pressure, uh, even though they, you know, let a game or two slip away in the semifinals. Um, and then in third, uh, I would put G2. I would put G2 there, uh, just because of what they've shown here at the major. Uh, they've always had this doubt of can they actually perform against the European teams and hell yeah, they can. So give them a top three there um, right now. And then Team Falcons is indeed a team that really showed up. Um, I've heard the streets talking that they were basically the best team in scrims outside of uh, Europe and North America. And they were a real threat yeah. to, to anyone who played them uh, in scrims. So um they are a team that is maybe the best in the world right now at adapting at coming up with smart plays to outplay your opponents yeah. and that's something that other teams have been struggling with um they have tried to counter that but how do you do that in the middle of a series it is mm -hmm. extremely hard to come up with some kind of strategy or rework your game plan or whatever it is you need to do to beat them because team falcons will just continue to out try to outplay you and outsmart you within yeah. a series so even if you can kind of counter what they're doing they're gonna counter your counter they're just such <laughs> a smart team at the moment okay they they fell uh in the quarterfinals but they're in the top four for me um and then in fifth, I have, but it's so close. I mean, there's teams I'm not going to mention right now that could be in that fifth spot as well, like like the two teams you've mentioned. Uh, I'm going to say Team BDS. Um, they might not have had the hardest run through Swiss, but they still decisively beat G2 there. Um, even though I have G2 above them, I think they're a team that can really uh, beat the others, you know, when it comes to it. So I'm putting them in fifth. Nice. I think it's cool that for almost all of our lists, there's like a solidified like world yeah, top, top four. four. Yeah. And then there's, a, you know, kind of that debate five through eight. Um, and also it feels like that the best, if you were to make a list of the best players of the season so far, almost all, every team on those lists has one that's like debatably top five. Like sure. you look at like a Tau, Daniel or Beast yep. Mode. I would lean Beast Mode, but you know, Daniel's really, really good as well. Uh, Kaleers, man, what a performance this 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 major from Kaleers. Um, I think I was I think in the minimum <laughs> in the uh, in the minority. I thought Seiko was the best player this weekend. Just the, they basically said your job is the entire back half of the field also score, and he just <laughs> controlled the game perfectly. I, I was so impressed. Um, and then obviously with um, with oh my gosh, I can't remember. Uh, well, sorry, I meant with, with Genji, you have FK and Jack, and then, you know, uh, BDS. I thought Drolly was great. But every team has, like, a standout, standout player, oh, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. Flash the I, you, also, you also hear with, like, all five of us where, or, or all three of us, excuse me, at that fifth spot, it's a team that, like, just slightly underperformed, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, a little bit of inconsistency from a Genji, a little thing. bit of inconsistency from Vitality. BDS yeah. didn't bring their A game. We know they can... And so it just shows again, it's all so close. And, and none of us selected Furia, and, and rightfully so, because they kind of capitulated there once we got the bracket. But my God, they, they, their performance in Swiss, holy moly. Mm, Trofino, you know, they, man. If they were firing like that mm -hmm. against Vitality, we may have seen a different a different series. So it yeah, did raise some really, eyebrows when they went to game five and won against both Team Vitality and Gen G. I mean, mm, yeah. yeah, they showed up. Yeah, they really did. Um, I mean, it's such. 
it's such a it's such a tight race with those top eight and, and i really i actually think i think complexity is not too far behind as well so yeah but an i think exciting it's time for just, international competition it's just about fair that they dropped out of the top eight even though i yeah. would have liked to see them in as well yeah, i yeah. think that's the right top eight we got out of the swiss stage is the, the teams topic. you want to see yeah, go through and be in that playoff records. There's no and, weird upsets, even though a team like Rule One definitely underperformed. Sure. The top eight was just so stacked. Yeah, absolutely. And I do want to say, but you know, because we're, we're not going to talk about them, I'm sure, um, too much, but shout to Luminosity. You know, that is a team oh, yeah. that I think a lot of people said they fluked their way to the major. They got fortunate brackets. Uh, they didn't deserve it. You know, they're not experienced enough. They don't have the mechanics. I mean, you know, you name it, and it was probably said about them. And they played so well. You know, it may not be the most standard meta in the current day, but that doesn't matter. If you can make your opponents uncomfortable and you have what it takes to, to put the ball in the net, then, you know, you're, you can be competitive. And, and they took Vitality to Game 5, so also, you got to tip your power. cap to them. I want to shout power out Power. Power, too, yeah. It was a couple shift cast hopes Hosts talking about Power's got no shot of making round five. Okay, and listen, proud, card-carrying member of Nupo Nation. Farmed him. Game five OT, but then it had 50 into his net. Yeah, so, I, I definitely, power. I did not have much faith in Power. And I think a lot of that stems from just, I didn't have a whole lot of faith in the region. But you also notice I had Elevate taking that upset over Pioneers. And yeah, they we all, we all took it. a they, loss they on actually, that one, didn't we? They yeah, actually weren't even close did. to doing it, right? Pioneers handled them very comfortably. And I think that kind of showed me that I, you know, didn't give them the credit that they deserve. Um, which, and, you know, I explained this in the past with power winning three for three over there and, and never really being tested. That's where that stems from. But Pioneers is still a good shout. Um, competitive as well in that, you know, middle of Swiss area. Um, and, and I think that they've got plenty of room to improve as well. And, and if power sure. can... You know, I mean, I hate to say this, but if they can just add one more piece, banana head, that is beast monster. Yeah, he's he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. um, and Fever seems to be the only OCE player who can figure out how to win on LAN. Like right. I think the last what three years, every single OCE team that's like won a couple series on LAN has had Fever on them. So shout out to Fever because yeah. he yeah. he's still you know, all these years later he's been playing and for a while. Yeah, yeah. Out. I mean, this is we're gonna take a little tangent here, but y'all tell me, I mean, what? What I hate to be so just blunt about this too, but what 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 does Nupo do? Like what do we, that I mean he needs to be like in a he needs to be on a top four team in the world. I I got a I got an Oregon Utah that's calling his name. That dude come down is, to NA baby. Dude, he's unreal. He's, he's unbelievable. So good. I, I was actually thinking about this. I feel like every single, you know, casters and, and content creators, they do their top twenty five pre and post list. Sure. I think every single caster, their their top 25 list is going to be all exclusively eight player, all 24 players from the top eight teams and oh. Nupo. <laughs> like, it's just, he's going to be the only player that Dude, didn't make top eight. To I make mean, it. It, was, it was mind-blowing, man. He is yeah. so incredibly talented mechanically. He is so fast. He's a beast, I just man. feel like, when, it's like, it's just like, in the past, and this is like, we'll, we'll shrink it down a little bit, but, but I look at NA and I saw Optic, you know, going out 15, 16, and we're talking about winter back. And I'm looking mm -hmm. at AJ and what he's putting up, and I'm like, that is not a that is not a last place performance. Yeah. Why is he getting yeah. last place? I felt similar here with Nupo. It's like he is so good. I just think that they're like, I don't know how to do it. I don't know LJ. what does, does he does he go join a European team? Like LJ, what, make I'm, that call. LJ, make that call down to Saudi Arabia. Bring him, bring him is, home. Dude, bring him home. So good. Nupo? Nupo with NA space? That's 2.0 <laughs> ratings every season. Easy. It's Come actually on. really funny because I haven't watched more than a game of Nupo this whole entire major because I was watching the players' faces. Sure. I was taking videos on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was you, you missed on your board. Videos. He's working. And I, I have to watch some games back because outside of the playoffs, I mean, that's that well, Friday with it was such a long day. I mean, we'll get to it, but it was such yeah. a long day. Uh, I've, I've seen the reactions and wow, they were popping off. Yeah, um, but yeah, well, I'll I tell mean, you, Nupo put up 660 points on my fantasy team. Oh, there we go. I'm <laughs> on. Him in beast mode, him in beast mode almost won me the shift league, bro. <laughs> after after day one, after day one, loss was at 895. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was <laughs> insane. He was the he highest, averaging like 2.2 goals per game. Yeah. 
he was just, <laughs> just freaky stuff. Of course, obviously that stuff comes down and whatnot, but yeah, yeah, it was funny. All right, well, there's our top five. Let us know what you think. Drop them down in the comments below, or as always, jump into the shift cord, uh, drop your takes in there and, and discuss the uh, event further. Let's revisit our double down segment. All of us gave a little bit of a hot take rolling into the major. Spoiler alert, we were all wrong. <laughs> you guys were a lot less wrong than I was, though. <laughs> I mean, not not a little you bit. You guys were close. Wrong. You guys, you guys had actually takes that it was close, yeah. met in a final game yeah. in in the Swiss. There was yeah. there was a there was a chance we, that if we you, almost like helped each other. Yes, it, it was all down to <laughs> one like fifty seconds that LG just let yeah. there. So my my yeah. take. My, my double down take was uh, three NA teams make bracket. Obviously, that didn't happen. LG was very close. Yens had to take Vitality will not make bracket. So we could have double whammy right there. That would have yeah. been a legendary moment. Legendary moment. Bro, I, I can't lie. I was so salty. And listen, I am not like a, I am not like a, I'm born in North America. I'm a diehard bleed. You know, I, I don't, I, I'll be honest. I, don't, I couldn't care any less. What I'm cheering for is the most international competition we could get. I want to yeah. see Falcons and Fury win. That is my, like, that's what I'm diehard about. But. And so defense in the arena, by the way. Yeah. It was yeah, a I can hear support it. for G2. Yeah. Because we didn't want to see an EU top four. Right. But I say that to just, like, I'm not just in a super fan, but Luminosity beating Vitality would have had the space in shambles. It would have been it would so have been, funny. Johnny had already tweeted out. You know, like yeah, the, uh, eight, the the, the number Frenchman. of players in the bracket. I mean, it would have been hysterical. I was so salty. But obviously, Vitality stepped up when they needed to to, to make that win happen. So, Yens and I, unfortunately, did not uh, double down correctly. Yeah, for my, for my take. They were a they little were. bit too yeah. hot. For, for my take. It burns us a little bit. <laughs> I had uh, Gen G going to the final. But if you really think about it, you know. They lost in game seven to mm -hmm. the champions. Right. So if they had won, yeah. You know, it's not, you know, yes, another team did lose in game seven to gentlemen mm -hmm. as well, but that's that's fine. They would have choked <laughs> it again. The KC rise, chokers. We know that. That's what they're known for. So that's really, I think that for. the I think that the the quarterfinal series, Gen G know. versus Gentlemen. <laughs> Trust source. Trust. <laughs> I was just gonna let them yap or what is it? But I think See, so. I think that, that I was that like source. Right I made it up. The guy. Yeah, I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this I definitely think, came to me in a dream. Yeah, but I think if if Denji maybe won that, I think that might have been the real Dude, finals. Hey, look, <laughs> I don't know. To 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 be fair, in the reality that we're operating in, me and Yens were closer. It was yes. like it was actually very close to happening, but. I do think that Gen G, like, could have easily made the grand finals. If you swapped, they didn't the do what they needed teams. to do. Yeah. So they lost. But we've been saying it the whole time. All those top eight could have been there, and and Gen G was playing well enough to do so. So I think if I don't you think take, it's a, I don't think it's a bad take by any means. I think if you take any of those four teams that played in uh, three, the other three teams that played in Gentlemen's bracket, and you put them down, obviously you don't know how they're going to perform in like a matchup reason. I think they all played to the level that G2 did. I think they could have made the final from that. I think yeah, Falcons yeah. and I think Falcons and Carmen Corp absolutely probably would have made the final from the other side of the bracket. That felt like uh, the final. Yeah, and I'm going to cope by saying Gen G also would have made the final from that yeah, side of the yeah. bracket and won. Hey, Chronic you know, that's the whole point. We give some hot takes, and, and frankly, we were all we were all fairly close. So they were reasonable. for us. They were reasonable. We'll, we'll revisit that segment and see if we can see if one of us can get one right here in the future. Yeah. All right. That should be fun. Well, we've talked a lot about some of the results and things that have unfolded as far as the competition goes, but Yens was on site. Um, obviously, as he just mentioned a minute ago, he was doing a lot of working with Shift behind the scenes, interviews media, et cetera. But we got some questions here and I want to hear from you. I'm actually really excited to hear about this because I saw tweets from Lethemir talking about, you know, he got a chance to speak with some Blast employees and he feels really encouraged. I saw Mercy saying, hey, I know I've been, you know, very vocal and very negative about things, but being here on site and talking with people, I, I feel more optimistic and, and and I feel encouraged about the future. So Yens, talk us through a couple of things. The first thing is just what what, what was your day to day like during the major? And obviously, this is through the perspective of someone with media access. Is that right? Yeah, that's okay. Right. So he, yeah. he's got some access to areas of the venue my, uh, that your typical fan wouldn't. Right there in the background behind me, if you're watching, 
the video of this. I can see it's it a, like so quite blurred. a collection right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll show you just a second. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> Come on, bring it over. Oh my goodness. For the watchers and not for the listeners, unlucky Spotify. Holy moly. Um, we've got the new one, Media. That's, oh, nice. that's nice. That's nicer than the old one. It is one. nice, yeah. It was very nice, yeah. We got this on Saturday, although we were there on Friday as well. Got a wristband for that, just a paper one. Uh, but they've got some other press ones uh, yeah. where they can show off and uh, use that as rules. decoration. It's always fun to collect those. I got my little oh, collection. Absolutely. I got my collection back there as well. Yeah. One of them is even in Spanish because in um, the one in Madrid, they just used Spanish to say periodista, journalist. Oh, there you go. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it was, it was lovely to be there. Um, first of all, I had bought my tickets for the Counter-Strike Copenhagen Major last year, months ago, because I wanted to go there for Counter-Strike, be yeah. to Antwerp and Paris Majors, and, and the first CS2 Major was really exciting. Uh, and then we got the announcement of the RLCS Major being in the same city on the same weekend. So I had to sell those tickets, but I could still go on the Thursday before the things on stage happened there. Luckily, nothing went wrong for Rock League. But if you don't know, people stormed the stage at the Royal Arena for the Counter-Strike event and uh, security really had to step in. And it, it, it's a scary situation, even yeah. though nothing really went badly. It's still a scary situation. And luckily, everything went great for, for RLCS. It was a great yeah. event. But I think it's an open secret that Blast didn't really have the time to put on the best major one they wanted, right? They yeah. came in three weeks before the start of the first split. They had to organize everything. They had to take over the entire organization from ESL. And they went with a, a venue that they could manage, that they could get. It's in Copenhagen. Uh, it's a Danish company, Blast, so it made sense for them. The arena looked more like a sports hall in an average urban neighborhood. Um, but then you actually came inside on the Saturday and the stage looked phenomenal and mm -hmm. brought it all back to the level where everyone was excited about it. So that was really good. But my first day at the RSS Major was on Friday uh, when the players weren't playing in on the floor in the arena yet but upstairs you know in the basically in the uh, in the foyer in, in the in the area where people could get their drinks and and uh, and could walk around outside of outside of the stands um upstairs there were booths for the casters also for the other language casters, but the, the casters for the A stream and the B stream were right next to the players. So you yeah, might have heard hear. some of the cheers and the oh, yeah. ah, from the players you know, when they run a game actually, on the other stream. Occasionally, you would get a production mute because a player would be screaming a curse word. Ooh, yeah. I have yeah. heard some curse words. Calm. I have. Tom so, said some crazy stuff. And that's he might crazy. have. <laughs> he might have. I didn't record it, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of... Happy that I didn't. Um, but we had the the players sitting, um, basically the two teams from the A stream and the B stream with in between a little area where Leaf did his interviews, where I've also done uh, some of the interviews with players there. And it's so loud with yapping. There are, because you've probably seen, and if you haven't seen them, go look them up on YouTube, teams releasing their comms videos, right? Mm -hmm. And those three players are basically con con talking through each other the entire time. Just, just, I got, I got time, time, time. Yeah. Whatever they're saying, no one is <laughs> taking a break from yapping, yapping, yapping. There is constant yapping going on. They're just taking everything in while they're talking, while they're explaining where they are and what they want and a fake and the time and everything's going on at the same time. But that's only one team. That's only three players. Mm -hmm. When you were there without noise cancelling headphones, you were hearing that from 12 players at the same time <laughs> and, two, and two caster duos. It was 
so hectic. It was so yeah. hectic to listen to, to see, and also the entire production of it because there were admins walking around, changing out setups, adjusting the heights of the desks, everything, swapping out SSDs. Everything was going on because there were two streams going on from 2 p.m. until 10, 30, 11. That was when the last game finished. So yeah. it was a long day for everyone, especially for the admins who then had to bring all the PCs downstairs to the floor area and set up the stage for it. So, I mean, props to them for getting all of that work in because they had to be there at like noon, I guess, maybe 11. And they left at midnight, maybe a little bit past. So that's a, that's a day and a half. Brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. But the first day, um, there wasn't really an area for the press. There was a press room, but no area for, to talk to players other than the, the little interview booth that Leaf used for the broadcast as well, which we tried to use as well. But it's a learning experience, not just for Blast, uh, but for us as well. It was the first time we were doing some video content. Uh, the first two interviews um, were with Lost and Snowy. And I'm, I'm sorry if you're hearing this, but we lost ha, 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 the audio on that one. Um, so um, I still got to get something out of the Snowy interview. But uh, yeah, could, things could have been better, but it's a learning experience. And we were just making all the mistakes on the Friday. So we didn't, didn't have to make them on the Saturday again. Hmm. Um, and then, of course the actual playoffs with the crowd, with everyone getting loud, with the fantastic stage, seeing the trophy. It was really good. Um, usually, or before this major, um, press for RCS events means having an area in a press room where there's a conference yeah. style uh, interviews, right? So the, the press is sitting there, not a lot of us, but there's some French outlets um, maybe someone like Lola or Gregan would join us at, at previous previous lands, uh, and we would all ask our questions to the teams coming in um, after quarterfinal or or whatever. Blast is doing it a completely different way because they're used to doing it their own way, and that's how they they run things. Um, and they're setting up an area right outside of the floor. Um, Basically, if you've ever watched football or soccer uh, games where the players get off the field and in and other sports too, of course, and they walk past a wall of journalists trying to get their attention, mm -hmm. like, hey, can I ask a couple of questions? That's how it went. Mm -hmm. So that means that on the Sunday, when the teams who won their semifinals still had to come back the same day to play the grand finals, were not very down to... to yeah stand there for, for just a couple minutes to, to answer some questions. So unfortunately, the Sunday was less productive, but the Saturday was amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so you would say that the main sort of difference um, between, I guess, the, the ESL ran uh, lands and the blast lands, at least from a press standpoint, was the sort of accessibility to the players as opposed to the more... Um, press conference structure of the the previous lines mm, yeah there's pros and cons to it because if you have press conference style then the whole team uh will be escorted to this room and will mm. sit down and answer yeah. some questions and here it's really you know up to the players if they actually stop for you and and give you some of their time to answer some questions so it's uh from a press perspective it might not be ideal at times um but it, it, there's pros and cons to it because you also get some really good reactions right after the game um mm. you get to to pick out a player talk to them uh the lighting was amazing the the setup there i mean the sound it was right next to where the carmi uh fans were more standing than sitting uh so it, it was loud um, but we got some uh, microphones uh, for it, which were really easy to use. You could just g get a box like this and get a receiver on the camera that uh, Martin Fawlty was bringing, one of the other shift colleague, and I could clip one on here. I could clip one on the interviewee, and we were done in a couple minutes. So it, it, was, a, it was a good setup. It's just something that we're not really used to and uh, that we have to get used to and the players too i feel like if the players 
know what's expected of them in the next couple of lands, then they're also going to be yeah. better with these kind of interviews. Because now it's just like, what was happening? The first right. uh, player I wanted to talk to was Eversax. And he was like, uh, manager, can I even do this? They just weren't really briefed very well on it. But it, it's a learning experience for everyone involved, like I said. And this is a, a big step in, in, in that. Yeah. Um, and then outside of the press, like what, you know, we saw, I guess, as viewers from home, uh, there was a moment in which uh, on the first Tusk pre-show, uh, they had Rettles on and they had to stop the show because the Vitality uh, Gentlemates and Carmine Corps fans were having a chant off, right? And, <laughs> and I think that sort of um, that sort of encapsulated this sort of passion. I know Furious Ultras didn't make it uh, because they didn't make the, the fr- Sunday, but they brought up the drums and that whistle. And, you know, I love you. Furia, but let's leave whistle. the whistle at home. The whistle okay. gotta go. Let's go. No whistle. All from, bring another drum set. How about that? We'll get you. Yeah. Let you another drum set in. No whistle. Some anyway. shakers or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no vuvuzelas. Those are awful too. That's South but, African. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember that one World Cup that they wouldn't yeah, stop doing South them. And then they were like, a, they were crazy. like a, they were a plague for well, a couple was it, of years. Was it Brazil? <laughs> it was a plague. I can't yeah, remember. It was Brazil. You're right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but. What was it like in there? Like, how, was it as I crazy mean, as it looked like, you know, from the from the state, from the um, Twitch stream? It was, yeah, I mean, there were, I guess, smaller groups of uh, ultras than we've seen at Dusseldorf at the World Championships last year, uh, because not all the Carmen Corps were, fans were organized for it. The Blue Wall didn't really come out in, in all their strength, but... It was still really good to see the Gentle Maze fans, you know, being there for their team and the teams really appreciated it as well. So it was really good. Um, it was really good to see. It's a smaller arena, like I said, and that brings a different kind of vibe. Not not in a bad way at all. I, I actually think that for a major like this, you kind of want the crowd to be quite yeah, intimate close. in a way. Yeah. It's It's not they're a little bit closer to to the floor they're, they're a little bit closer to each other uh they can have this chant off without you know having to shout over uh the the entire uh, floor arena um so yeah it, it was a, it was a good atmosphere overall i think a lot of the fans appreciated the other fans as well um although some of the i think uh some of the um Gentlemate fans, for example, they would support the North American teams just because they didn't <laughs> want the other French teams to succeed. Which that's awesome. is that's fun, though. That's fun. Interesting dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not to witness that. Yeah, and then overall, very good. Yeah. We, I think we got to ask, though. You know, that's all fun with all the technical stuff, but let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's talk about some tomfoolery. Let's talk about some silliness. What was the most ridiculous thing you saw? What is the one thing that you're going to be telling people about until you're an old man? Was there anything that stuck out as just like such a wacky event that happened that you're like, what, what, are we, like, what is going on? Um, or was it, was it just all business for the shift <laughs> team? Well, it, it was pretty funny that while I was, I think, uh, interviewing Itachi for the, for the winner's final, mm-hmm. final interview, Squishy and Zen and everyone was just walking through, <laughs> through like the camera. The ca- yeah, <laughs> that's oh, actually that's nice. really good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, um, I heard Squishy was fanboying over the Counter Strike pros while the game was on, which is a pretty oh yeah, they, thing. like say Wu and Apex and the the other Vitality players came stopped by, which was really fun. Yeah, and um, I had some of my friends in the crowd from. You know, you know them from the 104 section from mm-hmm. London. Now we're returning to London, so they're, they're all very happy about that. And every time uh, I walk past, because we didn't get into the press area next to the stands through another door or anything, we needed to go through the front, and it was at the back. So we needed to walk in front of the crowd, uh, along the long side of the floor, to, to get there every time. Uh, not during the games, at least we tried not to. Um, but they were like, uh, every time I came by, uh, uh, hey! <laughs> that's really, really fun. fun. That's um, awesome. I mean, I guess the most wacky thing about, from my perspective, was that 
the arena itself couldn't host the press room itself, which was just the area where we worked and we had our catering and everything. Um, it was actually in the clubhouse of the tennis club oh my at the God. back of the venue. And I think some of the talent, some of the casters got to use the direct connection between the two buildings. Hmm. But we actually walked out through the side door at the front yeah. along the venue outside into Brutal. the clubhouse and up the stairs too. that was it was very wacky but it was a good it was still good that blast actually gave us access yeah. to that area because it was lovely to have that kind of space to work on things um and it was interesting to sit opposite of the people announcing or releasing the um uh, the world's announcement yeah. for the location of, of oh yeah that is actually, cool we, we were briefed on that like 20 minutes before like there's going to be an announcement that's fun you <laughs> had the intro it's still going to be but there's going to be an announcement that, bad oh i thought they told you i was like you get no. that's bad journalism you should have got that up on the site as fast yeah. as you could <laughs> we're not, we're not going to pull a wash we're not going to do that <laughs> that is funny um, well i mean it, that, that it was actually really good talking to some of the people from blast because we got yeah. to see how much of a learning experience it was for them because they are very new to the esports but what they were doing during this LAN event and during the entire split I've also heard from the uh, player managers and the, the RLCS admins who have been part of the team for for years sometimes they're really the experts when it comes to Rocket League esports what Blast have been doing really well is listening because this is not the time for them to make rigorous changes or haphazard decisions on how the esports should be run from their perspective. No, this is the time for them to listen, to listen to the people who know what they're talking about. And that's what they're doing. Of course, there might be things that might not go perfectly how everyone wants them to go. And there might be changes that people are opposed to. But what happened here is that they're listening and they're very approachable also for us to talk to and to see like hey how can we do this how are we doing this next LAN uh, they they've had so much more time for it than for this one and they're you can see that they're playing it safe right they're going yeah. back to two locations we've been before they're there it's a safe bet for them but that's I think a that's good okay thing because that that's I mean for this Just season I don't want it. to call it a transitional season because we're still Take, get, making the most out of this season. It's not it that we throw away the entire season because it's just a transitional year. No, I don't see it that way. But I see it as a safe bet for them to work on improving the show itself, right? They, mm -hmm. they did that with the stage already. I mean, they're known for putting on really good LAN events. So that's something uh, I think we can only expect from them going forward. But what they've also been doing is listening to every other aspect of the esport. When it, some things you might not even notice, like, um, for example, getting um, the coin was an idea from one of one of the new uh, Blast MPLs who has been in esports for a, a long time. Or I've been talking to at previous lands as well, and and they're taking that on. They're taking on new projects and they're trying to build it in their their own direction maybe yeah. it's a different direction than ESL would have taken sure. um but yes i too am hopeful of course it's such a nice environment so nice to meet everyone so you're always going to be you know looking back at it very fondly but i really do believe that from what i've heard um there's a lot to be hopeful about of course we'll have yeah. to see how it turns out but there's a lot to be hopeful about it definitely seems, I mean, like it it seems that way i mean we've, yeah. we got early announcements as you yes. said, um, like locations that are, are don't, it's not a high risk thing. You also notice that the Fortnite Championship Series is like a week or two before also at Dickies Arena. So I'm sure that, you know, coincides and, and is helpful. They got drops yeah. on. Um, they're listening to, you know, feedback from, like you said, Day people that have been around for a long time. So best of five. Yeah, anyway. really, really, really hopeful. Yeah, getting, that's right. Uh, Making that adjustment to the qualifier as well. I'm definitely hopeful. And I think that, you know, this first event has like has given reason to feel optimism. Um, mm. You know, on a personal note, I over the last like three months have definitely felt very 
uh, just a lot more negative than I have ever been. I'm a very optimistic person, and I, I don't I don't want to feel negative about like the whole thing that I cho chose to make a career. But um, you know, it, it just felt that way. I think a lot of the community felt that way. Um, you know, the, the RLCS aspect of it, no CRL announcement. Um, you know, the game has just been very stale. We lose trading. Yeah, it can be scary. So there's definitely been a like, in my opinion, understandable pessimism around it. So to see some of these things. Uh, that blast has done in the last two to three weeks um you know pumping out some w's has definitely got me feeling a lot better moving forward for sure and i was, I was saying a, a third crowd day at yeah, the, the yeah that's awesome. which is amazing to see yeah that means that well i'm sure because they're planning on doing the same um format right it's going to be swiss so i would format, yeah. i would assume that that'll be if it's i think it was they said it was a six-day event so, you know, it's either it's probably going to be round five. So that means 12 of the 16 teams at Worlds are going to get to play in front of a crowd. And some of them are going to play four, you know, potentially three, four times, which is which is awesome. I was going to say, I was quite happy about hearing that day two quals are now best of five. That was like such a nice, a nice thing. Um, just like knowing that after, you know, all the all the criticism of the online format, you know, obviously we didn't get auto qual back. We need to have that back. We didn't get day three Swiss back. We need to have that back. But it's a step in the right direction, right? That's a, it makes it a little better. I, uh, you know, I will concede that it's a good change for consistency, but as an individual that snuck my way into top 128, <laughs> <laughs> we, we should be having uh, less games. We, I was <laughs> I was playing with Lemon Puppy one night, and we were talking about it, and you know, I was I was talking about how good it is. He's like, "No, that's bad. That's our only chance for an upset. Is the best of three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's awesome that's awesome uh, i was all excited and he's like no 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 what are you talking about i mean my Mark, money my 40 dollars i know, I know. <laughs> that i'm totally gonna redeem Man, like I'm, that's definitely getting sent to me i'm super excited to hear all that yens i hope you yeah, had a good time i think the elephant in the room when it comes to land and land locations yeah. is france well, we is gotta go there paris we have to but I, i'm glad they didn't I'm not do it saying we, we got to go there, but we got to yeah. go there. Oh, we, we say that we got to go there. I, I'm glad they didn't do it this year, though, because sure. I, if they're going to do Paris, they better they got, yeah. do like they need all yeah. the time in the world. They need to get everything right. They need to get the right venue. They need, everything needs to be lined up because that is a genuine like that could be the tier one like like leaping pad. 2025 right? World Launching Championships. Pads. Yeah, like Paris, France. I mean, I haven't heard anything, but it has to be right it has to be <laughs> we gotta go dude the french yeah. have absolutely hard carried the esport yeah. for you know what? almost can, the entire time yeah. can i can i say one thing before we move on to speed taking but yeah you know i was watching and it, and it dawned on me uh i think probably this the saturday or maybe the sunday i was looking around at the crowd and, and i was looking at the players and i and i'm thinking it was sorry it was during uh carmen corp gentlemates and I, I was looking around at the players, looking at the crowd, and I thought, you know, I understand that there is a player who's won more than him, but there's just no argument for any money but KDOP as the most important and the greatest player yeah. to ever touch the game. Like, this is all him. It start. He was the seed. The like KDOP effects. Like the, the he set this culture and this and this and this. He was the water drop. Excellence. And yeah. then there's like. Like Ripples. the orgs that are in the game that are yeah. all French based, every all the teams that are French based, the fans. Like he has, this is his like his doing in, inadvertently. Yeah. But like to watch, you know, us get to a point like in the maturation of the game where you can physically see the impact that certain players have had on the culture of the game is unbelievable. And I think we already give Kate off so many flowers for being a great player, but what he has done his influence has done since the beginning of the open era is like among the best any esports player has in terms of their yeah. actual impact on esports. He has changed, not only changed, but kept this esport afloat and prospering with his influence and the way he's brought the country of France into the game. So shout out to KDOM, man. The GOAT, Solary Top 8, Major 2. The DOP. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump to speed taking our final uh, segment of the day. And we'll obviously, we, we kind of alluded to it there. We'll cover the world championship announcement here at the end. But speed taking, first up. Huh. 
Who, who, who which of you want to go first? I mean, I'm gonna look here for a moment, and I'll, I'll throw you. We one. heard it. We heard enough from Jens for a while. Throw me one. We did hear enough from Jens. <laughs> okay, no, we well, can let's, never go, let's we go can to never Michael hear. then, because I know that uh, I know that you you enjoy this discussion and this player. Seiko is quietly making his way into the goat discussion. This is an interesting one for me. I'm gonna try to keep it kind of keep, keep it speedy. Um, I have been a big proponent of being the best player on a title team. I, I think Seiko, I thought he was the best player in Gentle Mates. It's debatable. I think he was. I don't think he was the best player or the centerpiece of the BDS team. Is he now getting into top 15, top 10 all time? Four land finals, two land championships, one of them being a Worlds. Yes. Um, I just think that, like we just talked about KDOP, the influence he's had, the influence of players like Justin Squishy, the winning of Turbo, there's a such a there's that that upper upper echelon even monkey moon and the dominance he had over over a region for so long um i don't think he's gonna get to that goat tier yet he'd have to win i think a few more lands just because he has never he is only he was only the greatest player in the world for a very short period of time uh but listen i love him and i think he was being unbelievably underrated he is one of the gods of the open era you know he's been to half the land finals he's won two uh no but i love you and uh he, well, you know, I'd one of the things the he has going for him is, is like his career has actually been fairly short. Like he's still yeah. pretty new and he's already he's in his third got year. all these accolades and achievements. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I still remember when he popped on the scene for me. I know that he had been playing, but yeah. when he jumps on endpoint, and he's split. just absolutely bawling. I was like, what on earth? Where was this guy? He was the best player in the world that online. Sport. 100%. I, I won't have it. 100%. He was the best player. It wasn't world. close either. Yeah, and he's molded his game to be able to fit around other players. Like he didn't have to stay in that hard carry position. Sure. He's he's phenomenal. But let's pump the brakes on the goat discussion. There's just so yeah. many unbelievable players. We've Bring already it. heard a little bit about it, but I want to hear more about what you have to say about this. Carmen Corp are still the best team in the world despite losing in Copenhagen. Yes, yes, they are. Um, I totally understand that you know you know there's like this debate about like power rankings or. Um, you know, I don't know how, however you want to phrase it, but the most recent winner of the most recent event makes the most sense to put as a top team. But I am looking at this uh, just a little bit wider, I guess. You know, my, I'll, I'll open up my lens a little bit larger than just this strict event. Um, full credit to General Mates. I also think they have shown us that they're capable of that with that first event that they played in. You know, they, they like our estimation of General Mates has done this mm-hmm. in the like two months that they've existed, right? And, and they're incredible, incredible players. But the body of work that we have seen from Vatira and Rise and Ato um, with his Liquid, you know, debut and like from the jump, top four all the way through, right? I think that is just a level of talent that is possibly second to none in the world. Um, I think there are maybe two or three other teams that are on that same level as far as just S tier player, S tier player, S tier player. And they have something that I just don't really see present in other players. And it's that thing that we we talked about where the stakes get larger and they get better. Um, you know, mm-hmm. things get more intense and they get better. We did see that with General Mates and maybe that will continue to be the case moving forward. But for me, I if you were to say, we're going to put on a LAN tomorrow, it's going to be the, the, the LAN to determine the best team in the world. I'm just going to take Army Corp. I, that's just what I'm going to do because they have Rise. They have Vatira, who uh, again, it's just how many is this? How many 26 championship 26, Sundays in a row? 26. 26 championship Sundays in a row. That is bananas. That is crazy. The model, can, the ultimate floor raiser. The ultimate, the ultimate floor, floor, raiser. floor raiser. And um, I think Ato is a, a, a phenomenal addition to this team. You know, brought a little bit of like the wild card kind of play. Hmm. We saw that with the flip reset, ground pinch, top right slot in game goal six overtime to push man. the series into what seven. A like, goal. Just unbelievable, yeah, you know. They're 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 they are, and then they have Farah as well. I mean, they are a special team, and I know that they fell short this time. And I do think that, you know, they they were lacking a little bit of that clutch factor. I know they brought it back, but they had some pretty uncharacteristic misplays, some some just straight up whiffs that you almost never see from those players. So they deserve to lose. They deserve to be fourth, you know, third or fourth. I'm not saying that they should have won. I'm not saying that, but are they the best team in the world? In my opinion, yes. Yeah, Jens. Yes. Will, will we ever see a North American player transfer to Europe? I mean, never say never, but no. 
<laughs> Dan's <laughs> always got the speed speed takes, man. He's he's there the is. only one he who actually does the speed takes. Oh, I mean, I mean, I kind of leverage. Um, yeah. Well, why would they? Yeah. It's harder, potentially less money. Yeah. I could see exactly. I could see LJ exactly. doing it. If moving away honest. from home, be, moving away from family. If it would be harder, but there would be more money in it, you know, sure. there's always a chance that someone just gets a contract they can't refuse. Um, there's also and, the aspect of language too. You know, a lot of the top teams that could be a like an incentive to move, you know, they they may not be you know, English first. Yeah. 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 Well, I think about like the only time, way I could see it happening, and I know I, this was Jens's, but I'm just going <laughs> to. I like how. Well, he was so speedy. Just, I mean, we got to fill it in. Yeah, we need to fill time. Uh, um, go for yeah, it. Yeah, no, I think it could be like an like. Let's say, for example, LJ plays two more splits in North America with Space Station, and he's like hard stuck fifth in in uh, in in NA. He just can't make it, and then like an EU team that was like fourth, like like BDS calls, and it's like, hey, come play. I think he would do it because the top of NA salaries are very similar to the top of EU salaries at this point. It's just that like on the lower tiers, it's like a little, so a little lopsided in NA's favor. Um, but it would have to be that situation. Like a ridiculously there's, talented player who can't get his, who can't, who can't get the team right. Or there's all the talents consolidated and he's the odd one out. And then a team that's making majors in Europe asks him to come. The, the only problem with that is that there's just an abundance of talent in Europe. Yeah. That's like the problem. They, don't, they don't need to go across the way. So even though reverse, I had this theory that Zen was going to like do a reverse turbo and bring an NA player to like win the world championship again. That's not <laughs> happening, but it would be so fun. I love this. Um, I, I agree with every word that's being said and I don't have to add a single thing. There you go. All he had to say was nope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Hoodie, I got one for you. All right. Space Station Gaming is the closest team to the world's top eight outside of it, despite not making major one. Speaking of LJ. No. I think contractually Complexi. obligated to say no. Oh, I thought you were going to say Oxygen. <laughs> no, I think, I think Complexity is the closest. No, Oxygen's a, Oxygen's a good shout. I think Magnifico yeah. was good. Obviously, yeah. we got to see what um, roster transfers transpire. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, I think I, think I would take Complexity over mm -hmm. Space Station. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Michael. What's up? Moist held juicy back. No. Actually, oh. I was watching, I rewatched oh. Casey uh, Gentlemates today, and I was watching Juicy, and it was actually really cool because you can actually see like Joyo's influence on the way he plays, mm -hmm. the way he just will like try stuff, you know, pull it up. <laughs> The, like he'll just do whatever he's like yeah. you know game six or what is game seven overtime or game six overtime or something and he's on the back wall trying to redirect it in like with the series on the line with his tournament on the line i think that he learned so much about how to be an individually gifted player just playing with one of the most individually gifted players i think moist issue is what it's always been since rise left it's a play style issue it's that they don't play the way the other teams play in europe and it's costed them uh, I think that he took a lot of what he learned individually playing from Joyo that what Joyo rubbed off on him. That just like aggressive, fast, like I'm up, I got boost, like yeah, let's see free. what we can pull out of the hat today. And he brought it to a team with better structure. And I think if Joyo went to a team with better structure or created a team with better structure, he would look like Juicy, but maybe even better, right? Like, I, so I think, well, maybe he wasn't his best. He learned uh, such an essential part of what makes, what made him so great while playing with Moist. And for that reason, it was essential for him to be on that team at his road to becoming a major champion. But let me, let's finish it off with Hootie. Yep. Um, my take is, you know, so we've been talking about production stuff, but dream hacks are the most fun lands and need to be brought back if Rocket League wants to be a tier one esport in the future. Off season, I should say. Can, Off season. That's what I was gonna say. Can I adjust it to just like non RLCS lands? Sure. So no like your dream hacks, your universal opens, your WSOV um, type stuff. Beyond the summits or or what yeah. you know, whatever org uh tournament organizer. Mm -hmm. I think yes. I think yes. I think they are I think they're more fun. It's a different way because RLCS is the premier circuit. It is the thing where it's the most intense, you know, the players feel the most pressure because this is the thing that's most important. Like Nobody cares that you won four dream hacks when your career's over. I don't mean nobody, but you know what I'm saying? Like compare that to winning three majors in a world championship and it doesn't matter, right? Nobody remembers 
the two-time DreamHack winner. They remember the two-time world champion. So I remember Shaw at 45. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> but those <laughs> and those tournaments provide those tournaments provide that same level of competition mm -hmm. and the same entertainment value for all of us. But I think it allows those players to express themselves a little bit more freely, maybe play a little bit more relaxed. Obviously, they still want to win. They want, but I mean, y'all think about Randy Gibbons River Rats. That's not happening at RLCS land. That's happening at a dream hack. And that is freaking fun. That is so sick. Yeah. Sh uh, sh speaking of Shasset, the dream hack Finnick pop off yep. is change the, the game. That is the, you know, crystallization moment of the Finnick meta. Like that is when it happened right there. So I think those dream hacks and, and just off season tournaments in general, whatever you want to call them, you know, the, the lands put on by other tournament organizers outside of the premier circuit are very fun because they are just not the premier circuit. It's yep. that same level of competition. It's the same team, same players, but they can kind of relax a little bit, maybe play a little bit more free, maybe play a little bit more risky, and uh, mm -hmm. I think it results in some fantastic content. This is BTS slander. Beyond the Summit was by far the most fun land yeah. the World yeah, League has sure. ever had. I want, I want so badly for them to be like a BTS-style land, and I want them to do... A space station versus queso show match <laughs> all these years later because i just want to see i got my heart broken so many times just beat the crap out of them moist please old moist please i can't i can't i gotta know that it wasn't possible they now were that you guys super are all fun, better and they're still basically happening at the facilities because uh in valorant you have like the Tarek x ludwig invitational which yeah. is happening at the same facilities as uh, yeah. bts but I agree totally that the dream hacks is what Rocket League needs right now in the off season. It depends on how they're going to organize the world championships in, in next in the coming years. Because if the season is on a year basis and it starts at the start of the year instead of in the fall split, then the season uh, and then and then the season ends in September with world championships, then you basically have almost half a year or well, but let's say half a year yeah. left without any RLCS going on. So DreamHex would be perfect yeah. to fit in there. If if you keep that kind of off-season, of course, because what you could do also is stretch out the splits a little bit more so we don't have six regions playing on one weekend or, you know, every, leave a little bit more space everywhere sure. else. Yeah. And, and then you can make the World Championships later on in the year. But... If it's going to stay something like this and you have the world championships in, in, in late summer, then DreamHack is the way to go. If, yeah. if DreamHack wants to pick it up, please. And, and like a BTS style event mm -hmm. and the yeah. Universal Open 2v2. Course, like, I, 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 like all of that yeah. is... We, um, we, got a, we got like sort of a taste of a BTS style event, I think, with solo queue. Yeah. Um, just with yeah, like yes. the basketball and the rocket racing and, and all that stuff. And that was such a fun event to watch, you know, Absolutely. getting all the casters in there, getting all those young twos players. But, you know, it's not the same if it's not inter international. I felt the same about football oh, spin. But yeah. let's do some. Rizzo, I know you're just so into Rocket League esports nowadays. If you're <laughs> watching the shift cast as you are, you know, let, let's let's do solo Q2, but let's go eat you. Let's bring in some Sam. Bro. Let's bring in all the like. Let, let's an do international two v two tournament would be and a solo Q one too. Did you did y'all watch the um the uh it was rule one versus uh Curia. yeah I watched Curia it back. It was Johnny insane. Stream, yeah, yeah. Oh Nupo, bro, that went hot. <laughs> yeah, it's a Nupo Yan show for sure. They but dude, they were clipping, man. It was yeah. so much fun. Twos just provides those you know um mechanics freak of nature players the space that yeah. they need to pull off you know the 720 triple reset double touch double tap yeah. musty flick uh, it's just insane what they can do and it's Bring. on this on command too every time it, international show matches in general even in yeah. three, always three are always great content because um graybeard the south, uh, south saw that caster put on the show match between elevate Elevate, Elevate and, and Limitless. And limitless. And limitless, and swept, limitless them. swept them. <laughs> yeah, swept them. I couldn't believe that. I really couldn't. I, I yeah. was shocked by that result. I mean, it's give a me, match, but still. Sure. Give me 2v2 LAN invitation, okay? Jack, yes. first killer. Dan, beast mode. Yan, lost. Give me CRR, raise bull. Yes. Give me Nupo, Ahmad. Give me Kalir's Rawas. Even I'm sorry, TRK, but it is what it yeah. is. And then... Give me, 
Yeah, TRK and Upa. Sure. Let's just let's bring them all together. Let's bring them all. Uh, <laughs> or he can go on loan to the org and then give me Vatira and Atau and give me, you know, we'll do it again. Monkey Moon and Zen. 16 players. Mm-hmm. Just do a little little group stage, maybe a little oh. double limb. That's free. That's a little free. Oh money. my <laughs> god, that would be so incredible. Yeah. Feel free to yeah. steal this idea. Yeah. Someone Whoever's please. watching, lock in. I'll be there. Oh my goodness. It will be so much fun. Yeah, but we'll, we'll like we said, uh, the off-season stuff, there's some space for it, and I am, I'm hopeful that some tournament organizers want to fill that space with some fun Rocket League content. I mean, it's, uh, like we said, in the past, I mean, what was it, 2019, we had eight lands? Mm-hmm. And there's so many fun stories that came out of them, right? So. And I'll say this, too, because, you know, we hear, we hear this, like, sentiment from pros, like, it's too much. I can't do this much. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's exhausting. The thing that's great about those lands that are not tied into the premier circuit is if they need a break, they can take it. They don't have to go to the Dream Hack. They don't have to go to the BTS. They can take that break. They can take a vacation, spend time with family, whatever they need to do. And then the teams and players that do want to go, they still have that option. So we do have the potential for, you know, as far as viewers are concerned, a year full of RLCS caliber mm-hmm. competition. Yeah, and teams can take them some off if they're burnt out. Like yeah. you don't have to play in them. It's not like RCS, right. right? You can take a land off, which is nice. Well, we have one final thing to touch on, and we gave Blast their flowers for the early announcement. Obviously, they they released the uh, dates for London. Tickets have already gone on sale, but they also announced the World Championship will be returning to Dallas, Fort Worth, back to Texas for the 2024 World Championship. What do you guys make of that? I know we, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but do you think that it's a uh, do you think it's do you think there's anything negative about them returning to the same location for Worlds? I think it was a necessity, but it was a little bit of a buzzkill. Um, I mean, I think once we knew that the second major was going to be in uh, EU, we knew it was going to be North America, and there are so many incredible cities across the United States and Canada. Yeah, so sneak in Canada there. Um, that you know you could have True, it though. right. We've had one East Coast land since the um, open era began, right? It's been almost, you know, we're going to be three full seasons since then. Um, you know, Boston was so good. Um, so, you know, you're looking at places like New Jersey. What was the one? Like, what was the last one before Boston? Was it New Jersey? New Jersey, yeah. So that, was, it's been that was my first since, land I ever went yeah. to. So season seven and then last year. So two two in about six years or five, five years. So two, two East Coast lands in five years. Um, there's some great cities like Chicago in the Midwest. Um, you know, there's a lot of places you can go that present a new experience for, for teams and for, and for people that are visiting. Cause for some people that are like diehards, like this is how they travel, right? They go and, yeah, they, yeah, go and they, they explore through these events. Um, so it is disappointing, but it's not disappointing in the way where I feel disheartened about the future. Yeah, of right. I think it's just, you know, this is a necessity. Uh, they were clearly able to get it for both of the esports that Epic, uh, pays them to put on which is completely reasonable um but i would have liked to see it at a new place um and and just because I, it, it's more iconic i think when a world championship is like feels like it's going to be one of a kind and this one yeah. already feels like it's not one of a kind but then then yeah we get back to the season and how it's just that then the transitional season kind of comes into play mm-hmm. right right and i think it's fairly unsurprising after the london announcement that we're going back to dallas mm-hmm. um for me personally i have no idea if i'll be there it would be the first time outside of europe which i think is pretty funny that my first time visiting north america is, is the heart of north america Yeehaw, boy! not exactly you know maybe the place to be but what are you talking about, <laughs> son? Everything's here in Texas. So I'm I'll bringing you it. a cowboy hat right off the airport <laughs> from Europe. From Europe. Sounds, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, but everything's bigger in Texas, so I hope the yeah. land will be big and good and, and I, provide as much content as. So I did go made. to I did go to Fort Worth, and the arena is phenomenal. Unreal. It is Unreal. large, but it is super. Um, clean. It's a super good it's fit. So like it's, so, it's perfect for an event like this. Yeah. You know, the, it's got plenty of space for people to walk around. Plenty of space for, um, you know, booths and venues for you know merchandise or or the teams to set up shop. Um, 
I, you know, it was great for like a VIP section as well. They have mm -hmm. booths that they sold off or not, not booths. What are those called at the top? Um, boxes. Boxes. They had boxes they sold off. I know some big content creators bought boxes back then. So, mm -hmm. um, or maybe, maybe they didn't have to buy them. Maybe they got, I don't know, whatever. But it was a great location, a great venue for a world championship. Um, so I think it's, you know, like you said, fairly understandable. Um, I don't mm -hmm. mind it going back to the same location. I think it is. I think the thing that's a bummer is that it, it's like so quick because we went to Las mm -hmm. Vegas and then went to back to Las Vegas, but it was like so far of, apart. Yes, yeah, so they were in like a nightclub the first time they <laughs> yeah. were in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. It's that's not true. The same. Rocket League was a totally different thing at this point. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't mind it too much, and especially like Yen said, like they're getting their feet on the ground, and I do, I do think that if they can continue to build on this season, continue to learn, figure out the ropes. I think that uh, it really it bodes well for the future of Rocket League. You know, don't don't bite off more than you can chew. Take it a step at a time. Get a good feel for everything, and then once we feel nice and confident, and we've got a big off season as well to kind of field that feedback and you know go to the um, you know go back to the meeting room with one another and figure out what they like, what they didn't like, where they want to go next. I think that could uh, could result in a really really awesome next season in 2025. As long as we're not getting the same kind of grand finals as we got last time in the Dixie <laughs> Arena. Goodness gracious. Probably, I mean, in my opinion, the most boring grand finals we had hmm. with G2 just not stepping up and yeah. BDS. Just and it wasn't even like dominant the way last no, year's was, where it was like, yeah. Zen is the one, like the no, prodigal son is crowned. It was just like, they were just challenging the ball and scoring. Like, it, was the just, one it was like game, watching rank threes. It's the one game I don't blame the Americans for leaving <laughs> early for. That's <laughs> funny. You know what? I will say, there. okay, the loudest I've ever been in an arena was when Yan scored that goal. And Fury, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Was like, it's such a shame deafening. that... It was it's deafening. A, it's a shame that the cap on the event was such a bummer because it was actually a great event. It was fun. Yeah. I, I do have some PTSD from that arena, though, and it's because basically um, in Canada, it's very common. I don't know where outside it is. I don't know if it's even common in the U.S., but it's very common that you walk into a store and you ask for a cup of water and they'll give it to you for free. Okay. So that's like a normal thing where I'm from. And so when I was in Fort Worth, we had to like ask a guy to go get us water when we were doing press. And I just didn't want to. So I'd go to the stand and I'd be like, can I get a cup of ice water? Right. So I did it like three or four times throughout the day. And each time I would go back, they would get more and more like rude with me. But I was like, water is a, is a universal right. Like I'm allowed <laughs> to ask for this water for free. And then the next day I showed up and they were like, new policy. You have to buy a water bottle. And I was like, that's not true. And they were like, you have, it was like, it was like watching Seinfeld basically. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm like bartering about this and I finally get my cup of water on Sunday. And then like, I don't know, maybe a month later there, I was watching a chalk cast and Johnny boy just goes, you guys hear about that guy who was just like buying free cup water to avoid like, paying for water like what was that about and they were all like i heard about that that guy like what the hell like that's crazy and i was that like called out oh like no way this got out that i was getting free water it was I, actually, just ridiculous. I remember that as well but i i want to say if you brought like if you bought the bottle but then brought yeah you could the bottle they would just refill it for you I, but i was just getting free cups of like tap water he said they're he said they're bargaining with them. <laughs> I'm like, you have to give this to me. Like it's it's illegal not for you not to offer me water. And they were like, fine. Oh, funny. You can't tell anybody. And then they got out, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's a rumor of a guy begging for water. <laughs> Amazing. That is Amazing. so funny. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's your world's announcement. Fort Worth. And it is uh do y'all know the dates off the top of your head? September 10 to 15. Yeah, September. crowd days 13 to 15. There you go. So September 13th or 15th, if you are interested in going to World Championship, mark it on your calendar, get to looking for a hotel, Airbnb, travel, etc. Fellas, episode 10 in the books. Any closing thoughts? Um, there was a fight in my men's league basketball game last week. Oh no. Yeah. There's ejections. Was it your team? Your team was involved? Well, we're a physical, we're a physical, we play a physical brand of basketball. Sure, sure. And some people don't like it. So they get, they get upset. Yeah. But, uh, you know, once that it was a four point game when it happened and we went on a 12 0 run right after because some people can't handle the heat. We, we calmed down. I got him in the thing. I got him in the huddle. I said, boys, this is where we strike. They're all riled up. Keep it calm. Move the ball. Get easy buckets. And it was over. So we're on to the semis. Very exciting stuff. Very I mean, nice. This shift cast is kind of a separate deal from the rest of what shift does. But I yeah. still want to shout out 
uh, the amazing work people did from home as well, supporting uh, us uh, mm. on site. And, and just Finn was able to get recap articles, very detailed recap, recap articles. You can really follow the entire tournament through them. Uh, out like half an hour to an hour after the games ended, which was amazing. Uh, the socials were popping off, like Will and, and Jalen, and the graphics. We had them all and me. Ready, all going. Uh, you as well. I made right? one. I made one yeah. final. I won't tell yeah. you which one it was, but I did make one final graphic. You did. You did. Uh, it's yeah. just amazing to have all that support. And um, yeah, now that we're having some video content, uh, of course, it's also going on the website in the transcribed form with the embedded YouTube video, but you can find it on, on YouTube on your own as well. And um, yeah, we're working on things. I think this is best coverage we've done so far. And like Blast, it's only up from here. Nice. We're rocking and rolling. Y'all join the shift cord. Get in there. Drop your takes. We'll catch you. Uh, we might grab yours for speed taking. Leave your comments down below. What you think about Worlds? Are you excited? You disappointed? Uh, drop some. Drop your top five. Who do you think is the best five teams in the world? You still got yeah. Carmi Corp. You got General Mates. Let us know down below. Thank you for watching, and we will catch you next time.